I am Namit Chaudhary, the Administrative Coordinator at Lexpert Assist and I welcome you on behalf of our team. So, first of all, I would like you to thank you for giving us your time to like share your insights with us. So, now shall we proceed with an interview? Sure. Okay. So, let's just start with an introduction. So, how would you like to introduce yourself to our audience? Um, so my name is Christiana. I am a trainee solicitor at a city law firm in London, uh, Fox Williams, okay. and I'm currently in my second seat. Okay. So my first question for you would be like, what Got motivated outside. you to pursue law as a career? Um, it's, that's a very interesting question. Um, I think it was... Primarily the fact that I was quite good at sort of arguing, if that's even a thing. Um, I quite like debating and also um, I, I'm a strong believer in, you know, like justice and sort of, um, yeah, I, I found myself a lot in situation trying to sort of advocate for justice and, you know, on behalf of other people. So I thought that would be a good career path for me. Okay, that's nice. And like, uh, so we know while pursuing law, you have worked as a paralegal at, at various institutions and firms. So my next question for you is like, what does being a paralegal basically means? And how is it different from being an associate at a law firm? So um, in the UK, just to sort of explain how it works, um, you're... Um, in order to become an associate, you need to do two years of qualified training, which is being a trainee solicitor, a trainee lawyer, okay. um, which is what I'm currently doing. Um, okay. And that happens after you do your sort of postgraduate course. And in those two years, you see them four departments generally, depending on the firm, but generally four departments, six months, um, in order for you to decide where you want to qualify as an associate. And um, in terms of paralegal experience, um, that is slightly different in the sense that whilst generally they want you to have the um, postgrad diploma, that's not necessarily a requirement. Um, and sometimes you can even do it. Like I started being a paralegal when I, when I was doing my law degree. Um, so I haven't even finished my law degree at the time. Okay. But in terms of the actual job, um, I would say as a paralegal, I tell a lot of the tasks that I used as paralegal overlap with what I'm doing as a trainee. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the hierarchy, I'd say is just the tasks I sort of do before you become a lawyer is more of a slightly support role, but it's highly legally based. And you have, you, you're, you're meant to have the, the legal knowledge in order to be able to, to do the job. Um, but obviously, you because you're not regulated by the SRA. Um, in the UK, which is the Solicitor Recognition Authority, was it for most of the things, um, for example, advice or things like that, you would have to get an associate or somebody that is regulated to sign up for it, on it. So um, that's in a sort of nutshell, so to speak. Okay, we don't have it here in India, so that is why I had to ask this question. Like, okay, so yes, I think it's very particular to the English system. I mean, the paralegal role not necessarily is the same in the US, um, but I think the sort of training contract concept is very typical to, to the UK. Yeah, it is. And uh, like you just told me about being a training associate at Fox Williams. So can you like sh share some of your experiences over there? Like what is it like working over there? Yeah, um, so um, just for sort of a brief background, as I mentioned, you sit in four seats. Seats is just a terminology to say four different departments. Um, but I did dispute resolution in my first seat, which I did commercial litigation, which was a mix of everything from sort of general commercial contract disputes to securities litigation, international arbitration, civil fraud, white collar crime. So in Fox Williams, um, the department and the trainee sitting within the department and does a wide range of work in that, in that particular seat. Um, and in my current seat, I'm doing commerce and technology, which is is very specific to the firm, um, is a mix of commercial contracts, um, IP, which includes IP disputes, technology and data protection and travel. Mm -hmm. So... Um, 
again, it's very firm specific, but as a trainee, you sort of sit in the department and you do a bit of work and everything just so you get as much exposure as you can in order to, you know, realise what you like, really. And um, I'm going to corporate next, okay. um, so I hope. Um, but yeah, I'm confident that what we're going to corporate <laughs> is on my sort of first um, choice. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to going there and see how that is. Yeah, like you just mentioned about this uh, commercial dispute resolution thing, the thing you're working over there at Fox Williams. So can you please enlighten us more about it? And like, how can law students, how can one pursue a career in this field? Um, I suppose, obviously, I can only refer to the system in the UK. But for example, um, the sort of typical career path is you do a law degree, And then ideally, if you want to apply to the big commercial firms, um, I mean, Fox Williams is a city commercial firm, is a medium size. Mm -hmm. Um, But obviously there's bigger firms like, you know, Magic Circle, American firms in in the city Mm -hmm. um, that recruit heavily in your second year of your law degree. So penultimate year, if you do a four-year course. Um, So I would say, ideally, you want to apply in your second year um, primarily because it's a very competitive process and you're probably you're likely to apply a few years in a row before you, you know, manage to get through. Um, mm. And I think it's more targeting your applications because obviously you need to apply for a training contract or vacation scheme which gives you a week experience at the end of which you interview for a training contract. Okay. And if you get that before you graduate, the firm, most firms pay for your postgraduate course, which is the LPC, mm-hmm. the legal practice course. So obviously the ideal scenario, otherwise you have to pay for it yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and in order to obviously enter the commercial world, just to sort of go a bit more specific. That's a, you know, that's a general route, you know, you do an LPC. In the UK, currently, they're introducing a new way of qualification, which is called the um, Solicitor's Qualifying Exam, or SQE. Okay. Um, that, I think, launched in November, which is an alternative route. You graduate, you do an, um, a set of exams, then you go and do, I think, 18 months of work experience. You can be a paralegal you can be a trainee, whatever you want to call it, and then you go and do another set of exams. But, you know, I, I can't really say much about it because I haven't done that route. It's just being launched. Um, but in order to, uh, to to get to the sort of commercial firm, I think commercial awareness is the key element. Um, and obviously the term commercial awareness, I presume you hear it everywhere. Um, but is that requires a lot of investment in terms of your time and effort really so I'd, I'd say that's where your focus should be okay so you are currently you just told me you're looking forward to pursue your career further in corporate towards corporate side um yeah so i'm moving into my next seat in corporate yeah okay so uh, can you also give our viewers a little insight in the field of business law and management like you uh... um so um just for a sort of a brief description, generally in, in corporate, and again, it really depends on the firm because bigger firms have bigger corporate departments and they sort of subdivide into subgroups and, you know, type of work that they do. Fox Williams is C1 for M&A, um, the smaller deals up to 50 million. Um, so our M&A practice is very, very strong, which is, you know, the usual merchant acquisitions. Um, we are... Um, highly sector focused in tech like fashion, fintech, technology, natural resources, and so on. And also in our corporate departments, we're also tier one for partnerships, which is effectively a team that advises primarily um, partnerships or LLPs, um, general like law firms, accountancy firms, mm-hmm. those that are structured um, um, as partnerships. And there's more of an advisory type of work that they do is more focused on you know obviously in a partnership have partnership agreeing and different duties for responsibilities and so on and so forth and obviously they, they sometimes um advise you know when partners join or you know when when the sort of corporate structure changes um so those are the two main work that we do but we also do general advisory work on directors duties and other you know um sort of corporate advisory work um, within the department Okay, 
so like we know law is changing throughout the time so our viewers they would like to know that how do you keep yourself updated with all these changes in the field of law like um i think legally i mean from a legal perspective i think is the work that sort of keeps you updated because obviously clients need change and then you need to you know when it for example brexit take brexit as an example obviously we knew it was a big event and we stayed um up to date and so we, we we read a lot we do a lot of internal and external training mm -hmm. so um different departments have different sort of timing for the trainings but um you have we have at least like a monthly training meeting where we discuss what's going on we get a lot of like plc updates with the practical law um and generally we just discuss within the department and you know if a client comes to and we had this we've seen this a lot with brexit we had to deliver a little brexit advice pre the trading corporation agreement which was agreed on 24th december christmas eve so we delivered a lot of advice we got ourselves up to speed with you know what's going to happen will it to draw the bill sort of the need for advice makes you look into the issue and then you know the trading problem struck and then we had to go back to the drawing board and review that and then give advice and so i think it's a mix of you know being you know self-motivated to to stay up to date and there's there's good resources out there you know like practical law and just getting you know lexology for example mm -hmm. um and in the sort of more commercial world i'd suggest something like watson's daily gives good sort of proof sort of news you can sort of see what would impact and i suppose as a lawyer you always need to think about you know what is your client doing you know have a client base which is why a lot of the firms are quite sector focused because you know certain people obviously they specialize in particular practice areas but they also specialize within a particular sector because you're interested in what fashion is doing you will be following you know the, the sector to know what's happening how are your clients likely to be impacted exactly. you sort of preempt what is going to come your way and also you know from a business development point of view you want to you know approach your client and say you know this is happening did you know about it do you want to talk about it do you need any assistance so it's really a mix of you know training your being you know self-started and, and keeping up to date and also yeah client client driven i'd say yeah, I totally get that. Uh, all of our viewers are they would want to know that how to create how for a law student it's very important to create a good sop so how do we do that what all things we should include in our sop so to like build it good but a uh, resume yeah yeah you mean yeah um we call it a cv in the uk okay. uh or we refer to it as a cv i think resume is more american but i might be wrong okay. um i think so i think this is something that i talk a lot about in sort of my uh, relationship with my mentees and you know generally for other for other um you know uh, porters like yourselves um the application process in the uk is very very thorough and very specific is a skill set exactly. that you develop yeah. separately to anything else that you've ever done it doesn't matter how good you're you know a university or how personable you are or how much is a, a combination of all of those things plus commercial awareness you'll be saying that a lot um so i'd say firstly and again i'm, I'm purely talking from the point of view of um, a, a commercial lawyer so you know if you want to do commercial I don't know if you want to do criminal law or you know human rights I'm probably not your person to advise sort of on this mm -hmm. um, but commercial awareness is the key element and by commercial awareness I mean everything that's sort of happening around you within the economy within the city within you know and everything from you know how to start a business you know i decide i want to set up i don't know a beauty salon tomorrow what do i need to think about you know mm -hmm. sort of incorporation what type of business i want to do contract employees tax etc etc from that to you know what i do as a lawyer for you know a company that like a multinational that's trying to ipo where do i fit as a lawyer within that process because obviously you have bankers you have you know there's so many stakeholders mm -hmm. what do you actually need to do and to understand that you need to understand what an ipo is how you know banks work how the markets work how it's, it's all of that and just be able to you know 
to answer, I don't know, if somebody's telling you, I don't know, is as asking you a random question, what should somebody that, I don't know, is doing something, you know, what if they get a new, that, I don't know, this new tackle has been passed, or I, I don't know, or what if they want to branch out into a new sector, what do they need to think about? And there's just, there's no right answer for literally anything, not at your stage, it's the graduate stage, but you just need to be able to think commercially, what does your client care about? What do you... What would you what would you flag to them? Why why would they pay you to tell them something that they can't think about? Yeah. Um, and that comes with a lot of research and a lot of understanding, you know, how the economy works and sort of macro. Nobody's gonna ask you, you know, to calculate the interest on some, you know, complex bonds or you know, it's just understanding how this works. Um, and once you do that, you know, the applications generally in the UK are and again, it's, it's just a general sort of way of sort of putting it. But, it, you know, apart from, you know, entering your details, where you studied, how much, you, you know, your grades, et cetera, mm -hmm. and your work experience, they ask you questions where you can prove this commercial awareness, as well as your motivation and, you know, fitness for the role. Like, you know, why do you want to do law and, you know, how you got into law and why do you want to work at this firm mm -hmm. where you can show how you understand the firm and how you understand where you can fit in there. But also they'll ask you something like, you know, tell us about something they read in the news that, you know, might affect our client. And then that's when you need to think, and there's no, there's no right answer. You can tell me something that's completely unrelated as long as you give me a good argument for why you know, would that be relevant to our clients? And for that, you need to know the firm, the client that they serves, what's happening in the world, understand, you know, how businesses operate, why would they care about, you know, a trade deal between, I don't know, the UK and China, or, okay. you know, just things like your Brexit or anything else. So, mm -hmm. um, but that's knowledge that you sort of develop it um, over time. So the, the earlier you start, the better it is. And the same apply for jobs like paralegal. Um, I think you know paralegal is more it's a similar type of thing it's easier to get into um, and is, is a good I think way to start because you know it gives you you know an insight into what the legal profession is like and also you become better obviously the work Basically, it's the building base towards being a good attorney I would say so, yes. But then again, obviously, if you can go straight and get training, contract, and qualify, then definitely go for you know better money, qualified mm -hmm. earlier, of course. But you know, I, for me, paralegal experience worked in the sense that I realised the kind of law that I want to go into, and also when I got to the interview, I mean, it, it built me to the applicant that I was when you know I started applying for training contracts, and you know, well, I mean, I started applying way before. When I got good at applying for training contracts and, you know, I, I understood, you know, what the clients want, how the law sort of interferes with that, what we do, what we need to know and things like that. And um, in terms of commercial awareness, and I promise you I'm not in any way incentivized, uh, but my my top resource I take for that is the Corporate Law Academy. Okay. They, they do charge some sort of subscription for it, um, but that's what changed my game personally in terms of, understanding the commercial world and there's a few books as well that i found particularly helpful by christopher stokes know the city and commercial awareness i think uh, which i found particularly helpful and you know just i suppose even on a more sort of slightly smaller scale you know films like the big short if you watch the big short and you think you know do i understand what's happening which is regarding the financial crisis but i think is quite a good way to sort of make yourself ask some questions what did that happen how did the market crash what you know just things like that and it's just things that sort of incentivize you to look into something into more detail because if you pick up the financial times and you never really you know learned about you know banks or i don't know the, generally how the financial markets work or how corporates function um you're probably not going to understand anything from what you're reading so it's a bit of a waste of time um, anyway, that's in a nutshell, not really in a nutshell, but uh, there's just so much, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So lastly, what would your you what advice would you give to the law students? Like, kind of a success mantra for you, which is I don't know. I'd say try to be balanced. I think in terms of obviously university work is very important, but 
perhaps between the difference between and I, again I don't know how it works in India for example but in the UK you know obviously if you get first in your degree that's great but if you get 2-1 that's also good and if you can you know obviously get at least a 2-1 and focus on doing that but at the same time get your commercial awareness and knowledge of the process sharp because that if you graduate with the first but you have no commercial awareness and you don't know the process that's going to take you a long time to you know get up to speed whereas if you really get a 2-1 that's really not going to change your, your career and, and that's purely my opinion I think you know you need to focus on the things that will quantify or will matter in the longer term so I think you know having a, the right balance between you know university extracurricular activities which give you something work experience and you know commercial awareness and just you know attending events organized by the law open days you know networking events things like that that is just really invaluable so i'd say you know balance it out really well okay so this has been a really good experience thank you for being with us and sharing your insights with us this is really thank very valuable for us and our viewers so and well, we wish, thank you for having me yeah we wish you all the good luck likewise well, i wish everybody good luck and um, thanks for having me and thanks for organizing this i'm sure everybody really yeah, appreciates the, it it's our pleasure thank okay. you so well, much well best of luck thank you same to you